Hi, I'm Ruth and this is my channel Get Quilts Done. I want to share with you today uh, a bit about how I'm reorganizing and revamping my studio and actually I'm just turning it into a studio and I want to start with the first thing that I did outside of getting a new sewing machine four years ago and that is how I'm organizing my fabrics and I bought new furniture it's a by solder and it's called if I'm not mistaken Anda Noor it's the Anda Noor display it's very well priced it came to just a little bit a few cents under $194 a piece it was on sale but even then that's really a good price we're going to take a good look at it but I just want to say it was designed not for what it looked like but how I'm approaching the subject I want my fabrics to be on display I don't want them to be in cubes anymore and be stored I want them to be on display and to look nice and to be aware of what I have. I want to have control. I'm not, I'm not advocating not having a lot of fabrics. I'm advocating having control over what you buy. Not only what you need, but what you use and being realistic about it and being able to find things. So I kind of wanted the way to change the way I look at things. Now, if you still have uh, cubes there are ways of overcoming that problem and getting the same look that I'm going to show you and that's just by taking a few cubes and putting a few display items in there that would help if you have something from floor to ceiling because you don't have that much space and you need uh, vertical space to take advantage of it there's ways of putting a little few nice things here I chose uh, even though I don't have that much space it was just really important for me not to use all the vertical space, but you can do that. It's the concept that we're looking at, and I do recommend buying these because they're really nice for their price. I don't think that you can get a display cabinet at this price that works so well. So let's take a look. Just a quick look at what I am changing out. Uh, this I had three of and it made sense. I used the glass doors to have fabric and the middle section I used for books. And uh, I took the doors and I put things that nobody wanted to see. And the other two are not in use anymore and it does it's not working for me. All right, what you're looking at is both of them next to each other and there's a cutting board between them that's folded up. It's just the best place to put it and it doesn't look bad. Uh, each one has three shelves where the bottom is one shelf. There's one shelf that's movable and there's one shelf that's permanently in its place and it's got glass uh, doors and that I really like. I don't care if they're not hermetically sealed. Some dust can get in, but I want most of the dust to stay out of it. Let's take a closer look. Okay, there they are together. I took out the cardboard a mat that I have uh, so you can see what it looks like. You can have them uh, separated or together. That's what I liked about it. It's too high to work as a working space, but you could definitely put decorative things above uh, or utility things. Uh, and it works. I'm opening and closing the doors. I'm making a point of it because the review said that that's where the problem was. A lot of people were very unhappy with it. I had no problem with it. It opened and closed a very well. I don't know if the manufacturer fixed it or what, but for me, it was not an issue. You could see I'm using all of the space, all of the depth of the space. I was worried about that. If it didn't look good, I was going to uh, have to buy another one because it negates what I'm trying to do here. But I like the way it looks with the, using the back space. What I do is I elevate my mini bolts, the fat quarter mini bolts, and I put them in the back in the larger bolts, uh, larger mini bolts. That doesn't, <laughs> there is a thing like that. Uh, you can see those, that's what it looks like without it being elevated. It just doesn't work. There it is, elevated, makes all of the difference. 
So you could see now, this is what it looks like. You can see everything. There's a few decorative things. You can see the black and white ones. I took some out. I could put things there or just kind of leave it like that. I kind of like it because I'm using it. So I'm going to be changing. You're seeing the whole thing in my studio. I, I'm not showing you the rest of my studio because I still haven't made changes, but I will say my idea is, is that when this thing fills up, if I buy fabric, I have to take something out. And the reason is, is that I'm going to limit what I can have. I want to be able to find my fabrics. I want to be able to see uh, what I have also. And I, it's not only money, it's partly money, but it's also I want to have control over what I buy and buy for a good reason. And uh, you could say, wow, I like that idea, but you have too many. I'm going to do it in one cabinet. You could say, I like that idea, and I, but I need four cabinets. That's fine. Too much fabric is very subjective. But one thing is I really recommend having control. It's from control, we mean control over what you buy, control over what you use, what you decide, what you plan. It helps the whole system move ahead. I would really recommend uh, trying it and start with the perspective of how you're looking at your fabric. The next video, I'm going to talk about uh, something else. I'm going to talk about the, the mini bolts and the system and how, how we got to this place where we're buying incredible amounts of fabric and we can't, we're, we're in piles and piles of fabric and we're losing control of our life. I'm going to talk about it and how to rein it in a little bit more. Like I said, I always say, if you like what you see, please like it. If you have any comments, I'll try to get back to you. And please like uh, my channel or follow my channel and like the video if you want to. <laughs> okay, see you. Bye.